Praise God for this time that God has given to us gathered here. Praise God that we have that opportunity freely in this country and we give God praise and thanks. Wednesday morning I get invited. Uh, I was here Sunday as you all know and uh, I told Steve as long as I'm here until um, Shelly and I return to Suriname, I will come every Wednesday and be a part of your service. Shelly and I love you all so much. And Pastor is my father, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I sent a message ahead of time. Your son is in town. Take a chill pill and uh, relax and, and enjoy the service. <laughs> so as long as I'm here, I'm going to come every Wednesday morning. And I'm sure you will let me say something or let me preach the word. So invite your friends, you know. Tell him there is a brown guy in the ring. <laughs> and he's coming and following every Wednesday morning. You have many friends that go to other church, right? You need to come and hear Muhammad preach. <laughs> you know, tell him the first on the phone, when again you're going to hear Muhammad preach Christ? When? So this is your opportunity to come because life is short. Take your Bible and let's go to the book of John chapter 20. It's one of the most famous chapter in the Bible. John chapter 20 is a very, very famous chapter because of one person that said a few things, Thomas. And this Wednesday morning, we want to look at what Thomas said in John chapter 20. And if you look at this one verse, verse number 28, so very, very powerful that Thomas said these words and Thomas answered when he saw the resurrected Jesus Christ right there in front of him. Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Amen. Most of us here has heard that in the past. Most of us have heard that preach. How Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And that's what he is to us that are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But there is a lot also that is being said about Thomas. You know, most people don't recognize Thomas in the Bible. What they recognize is what the preacher said about Thomas. And most preachers have a message about Thomas. And most of the message that I heard the preacher have about Thomas is entitled, The Doubting Thomas. Every book you hear about Thomas be the Doubting Thomas. The Doubting Thomas. So Thomas got famous <laughs> by you and I, not by the Lord Jesus Christ. He got famous by you and I labeling him as the doubting Thomas. He got famous by preachers preparing messages and preaching messages in many different countries entitled the doubting Thomas. So he got a label. Remember not by Jesus Christ, but by you and I. But there is much more to Thomas than we say he's a doubting Thomas. So here we are in John chapter number, number 20. And we will look at what happened. And we pick a few verses. In verse number 19, the Bible said, Then the same day at evening, being in the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Well, that verse alone, it's a verse of miracle. And wonders. I mean, you could take this verse and jump and shout, Hallelujah! Praise God! What a, what a, what a God we serve! I mean, they were afraid. They were in this room. The door was locked inside, well secured, probably bars on the door. They were being afraid of the Jews. But lo and behold, the door couldn't hold him. I like that. Nothing can hold. The Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's God in flesh. The creator and maker of all things. We sing it. And you sing it. What a mighty God. We serve. What a mighty God. 
we serve. Guess what? Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. While the door was locked and shut and secure, and while they were inside, no one went, according to the Bible, to open the door. He just appeared right in front of them. He can do that. He can do it because he's God. And there is none beside him. If he spoke the word into being, then he can do that. And we praise God when we see that, that we're so excited when the doors were shut, when he said, the fear just, he came and he stood. I like that. One day, one Wednesday, I may preach a message entitled, He Stood in the Midst. In the midst, he stood in the midst. Our God is the God of the midst. He's the God of the whirlwind. Job will tell you that. He's the God of everything. He's the God of the sea and he's the God of the rivers. He's God everywhere. And praise God for that. That he stood in the midst just like that. He said in his word, he's in the midst right here. You know that? This Wednesday morning. I know that because the Bible tells me that. Not because pastor or I say it or Ed say it or, you know, Pierre said, no, no, no. The Bible said, where the twos and the threes are gathered together in his name. So we have one, two, three. The two. And then we have four, five, six, seven, eight. You know. So that's a beautiful promise that he is right here in the midst. Amen. And I thank God for that. His presence is everywhere. And the Bible said in verse 220, and when he has so said, he showed them that he is giving, the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected, is giving them the evidence. So look at the word he said, and when he had so said, he showed them his hands. They didn't ask to see it, but he is with assuring them that I arose from the dead, I'm alive, I conquered death. He's giving them the evidence. He showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the love of the Lord. And then the Bible tells us in verse number 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them. Where was Thomas? He should have been in that room, right? With all the other disciples. Being afraid of the Jews that they're going to catch them and put them in prison or kill them. But Thomas was not there. Guess what? We don't know where Thomas was. <laughs> Maybe he was outside telling somebody or doing something, but Thomas was not. According to the Bible, Thomas had more guts than they want to give to him. When I say guts, the man had more, more he was not afraid of, 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 of much. Like the rest of them were afraid, locked up in the room, but not Thomas. <laughs> Thomas was not there with them. He was outside probably mowing the grass or, man, what are they going to do with me? He was out somewhere, but he was not locked up in any room with them, afraid, afraid, afraid. And that's a good thing. We need some people with some guts. We need some people with some backbone in the church. We need some good troublemakers. Amen. Right? We do. Some really good troublemakers. God loved them. The Bible tells us that. You know? Trouble them something about the Lord, you know? Stand up for Christ. So Thomas was not there, so we continue on. In verse number 25, the Bible said, The other disciples therefore said unto Thomas, We have seen the Lord. And he, Thomas, said unto them, Except, except, this is what I want. Except I shall see in his hands. Now Thomas went a little forth. Look at how forth he went. He said, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails. Right? And put my finger in the print of the nails. You see, Jesus showed them his hands, but Thomas said, no, no, no. I, I, 
he can come and, 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 and show me his hands. But I, 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 I had to do. Thomas was demanding much more than what the Lord showed the other disciples. But what is wrong with that? You know, we are, we are all different here. God loves us all, but our personality are so different. And God used all this personality in the world. You don't have to be me for God to use you, and I don't have to be you for God to use me. Matthew was different from John, and John was different from James, and James was different from Paul. All of these guys, when you study them very personally, their personality was different. In this room, Pierre personality is different. We are talking about from day one. He's a different kind of guy. He likes to sing. He's energetic. He gets in there. And you ask him to sing one, but you want to sing another one. <laughs> and you want to sing two. You can't stop the guy. So he's different. He's different from Pastor. He's different from this one. He's we all are different. But God, this God of miracle and wonders that love us all, find a way that can use each one of us for His glory and His honor. And that's amazing to me. So here is Thomas, he's saying, look at what the man is saying. The man said, listen carefully, except I shall see, say to the disciple, except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nail and trust. Look at what he he want this to go in the print. He wants his his fist to go in the side of Jesus Christ. He said, "I, Thomas, will not believe. I will not believe. These are the facts, and this is what I want to see." But the Bible tells us that after eight days, again his disciples were with him, but Thomas was with them this time. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. Again, the doors being shut, secure. And no one went and opened the door. But then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst. I love that. Love, 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 love. When I say love, I love that. When I say love, you get it? I really love that. Because this Bible, according to this Bible, I, Muhammad, I'm serving the great and mighty God, and there is none beside him. Let me give you some example. In Mark chapter 8, Jesus was in the wilderness. So when he was in the wilderness, there was no Sam's Club around, and there was no Walmart around. There was no food lying around in the wilderness. And in the wilderness with nothing around, he took seven loaves and a few fishes. In the wilderness with nothing around, he took seven loaves and a few fishes and feed over 4,000 people. Amen. That's awesome. So he could stood in the midst just like that. The door don't have to be open. Remember that. And then the winds obey. The wind. The sea obey. Everything obey him. He made the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dead he raised. Those that were demon possessed. He said, free. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. For the power of the one we serve. His name is Jesus. All power is given unto him. And that is why I crack up laughing. I crack up you know, when I read this man. I, 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 I'm a kind of character like that. I sit there and sometimes I get up reading and I crack up. You know, Shelly probably thinks this guy's losing it. He's lost it. <laughs> you see, when I read John chapter 4, and the woman said, Well, you don't have a pot. Right here, I started to laugh. I cracked up laughing. 
The woman said, well, how are you going to draw this water? You don't have a pot. And I'm thinking, does he need a pot? <laughs> The one who could stand in the midst and created the universe and took the dust from the ground and format and give the man the breath of life. Does he need a pot to draw water from a well that he created? Oh man. So I, I, I cracked up laughing. I find it very, very amusing, but then I find it very powerful that he said that if you draw water from this well, you will thirst. And again and again. But I have a well. It's a fountain of living water. That if I give to you and you receive that fountain of living water, you will thirst no more. And that is what we are here. Like the woman of the well, we were all seeking for things that could not satisfy. We were all seeking for things that could not satisfy. And today the world is doing the same thing. It cannot be found at the bottom of a bottle. And it cannot be found at the end of a needle. It's in Jesus Christ. Your search and when you trust him like we just sing that hymn. And you let him become your all in all. He's my all in all. Yes. He's my all in all. I surrender all to him. He is my all in all. My search has come to an end. He is my fountain of living water. I thirst no more. I thirst no more because he is my Savior, my Lord. And then in verse 27, then he said unto Thomas, I like that. And he was not there when Thomas said all these things. He was not there. But he said unto Thomas. So be careful what you say in secret. <laughs> Before, be careful what you say about somebody in secret. When you think he, the person is not there, he's there all the time. And when you study the Bible, he knows the intent of your heart. When you study the Bible in Genesis, he said, I know your thoughts. Think of that. And I know your imagination. He knows where you're here. You know, you can be sitting here, you're not here. Your thoughts are you're, you, you're all over the place. You're sitting here, your body's here, but you're not really here. You're not listening. You're, 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 your mind is floating off. He knows everything. He knows about our thoughts our imagination, and the intent of our heart. So when Thomas said, this is what I want to do, and this is what I want to see, before I believe that he's alive. He heard it. And that is why he said to Thomas, he said to Thomas, come on man, knock yourself off. Come on, do it. Let me see what you got. You said it, let me see what you got. Let me see what you got. You want to do it? Do it, Thomas. Come on. Take your finger and put it in the print nails of my hand. Take your fist and trust it in my side. Come on, Thomas. Do it. Do it, Thomas. You never read that Thomas did it. But when Thomas saw him standing alive in front of him, I believe with all my heart that Thomas fell bound to the ground. And declare him to be my Lord and my God. Oh, what powerful words of Thomas. You are my all in all from this day forward. And that is why when you study Thomas and his writing, Thomas was the one that became the force. You know that? The first missionary to India. Thomas went to India and was martyred in India. Killed in India. He didn't care anymore. You have become my all in all. My life is yours. And Thomas decided this is what I am going to do. 
I'm going to give him my all in all. Thomas was the one who said also in John chapter, you know Thomas had some, yeah, yeah, a, a really manly, you know, tough, you need some, some people like that in the church. You don't need some, some people like that in the church, some, some men with some really strong backbone. Thomas was a guy like that. Thomas was a guy like that. I remember I was going to do a wedding in Suriname. And it was an Indian wedding. And Indian wedding is a lot of drinking, a lot of partying, a lot of music. But they invited me to do the wedding. So I said, this is an opportunity for me to share Christ. So I went to the wedding. The guy that was getting married was from our church. And the girl, well, the, the family was there. Drinking, I walked in the yard and the guy who was drunk, he, he, he walked up to me and he said, you're the preacher? I said, yeah. And he said, um, well, you better finish quick because we want the party to continue. So you better make the sermon quick. If not, I'm going to, and he said he's going to curse, he's going to do all the kind of stuff. But there was a guy that went with me to the wedding from Calvary Baptist Church. The guy just, just moved, me, moved me out and catch this guy and swing him and caught him and lift him in the sky. He said, you want me to drop you on the floor speaking to my pastor like this? You know that guy got saw sober in the air? <laughs> he said, no, please no, please no, you know? But me being in the flesh, I want him to be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was a young preacher. <laughs> I was not thinking the guy was drunk. <laughs> I shouldn't be, but, but you know what it is? <laughs> but you know, you, in some country, you have some guys that will go with the pastor. I like that. <laughs> Don't mess with the man of God. Or I'll take care of him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll take care of him. I, I like when I go to church and, and the pastor is preaching about 10 guys with a piece. <laughs> All of them packing. And then some lady said, Don't worry with them. We're packing too. <laughs> <laughs> and they opened their doors and said, Mohammed, look here. All of us are packing. He said, Whoa, that's a good church to be in. <laughs> I, I went to a kitchen in North Carolina and I was preaching a message and I used a, a blade as, 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 as a, um, an illustration. I was a camera. So I pulled the blade out and I had it like this as an illustration. You know what happened? That, that church went quiet. Something, did I do something wrong? And then finally, all these guys get up and say, Pastor, that's not a blade. Let us show you what a blade is. <laughs> <laughs> up in the mountains, all these guys come in. They, they have sword and knives and guns. <laughs> Listen, I was like McDonald. I was loving it. <laughs> I like that. So... Here is, here, is, uh, here is Thomas saying in, in John 11, you know what the guy said? He said, listen, if you go back, let me, let me read it for you quickly. He said in, in, in John 11, 16, Thomas said these words. He said, Thomas, which is called Didmus, said unto the other fellow disciples, this is what Thomas said, let us also go. Let us also go that we may die with him. So there is much more to Thomas than what we hear about the doubting Thomas. Much more to him. Here is a man in, in John 11 was willing. He said, let us go. He tell the others, let's go and die with him. This is the guy who asked the million dollar question in John 14. Oh, oh, we love that chapter. But in verse number five, he said, how can we know the way? Isn't that what we all want to know? How can we know the way. Why? Because every religion that I know of will tell us they found your way. And you have to join them. Scientology? The Baha'i is getting so big. You know the Baha'i has become a fast growing religion. You want to know the way there? Well come and sit. And you take this mantra and you meditate. 
you know, and you're lost. Why do I want to meditate and get lost before I found the way? No, no. Doesn't make sense to me. But every religion, the Muslim, the Hindu, you name it, every religion on this planet is trying to tell you we found the way, you have to be a part of them so that you can be on the way also. But Thomas asked that question, praise God. How can we know the way? He asked Christ that question. And Jesus Christ answered that question to Thomas. He said, I am. There is no other way. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. But it was Thomas that asked the question. He asked that question. He said, and Jesus answered it. India today. India today. We are in 2023. You have a president who, by the way, the president of India was just in Suriname. Um, just before she and I came, two weeks ago she was in Suriname. It's a woman that's a president. But you know, I didn't know that. The prime minister is more popular than the president of India. We all hear about Moody, the prime minister, but there is a president in India. It was a woman by the name of Drupati, Madhura Drupati. And she formed a law, she passed a law. Shelley was telling me that um, she would put you in prison for three years if you can, if I come to you and tell you about Christ and how you can change from Hinduism into Christ and so forth. She could put me in prison for three years. The law is passed in India. Now, keep her aside. The Prime Minister, Moody, who was at the White House, your White House in Washington, this guy never could have come to the United States because of things that he did in India, the persecution that he persecuted, other religious sect in India. He was banned from the United States. Study it. He was banned from the United States. But when he became Prime Minister, there was that law now that ban had to go away. So he's in the White House. But he's fanatical. He's a fanatic Hindu. Fanatic. He's Hindu, 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 Hindu. Fanatical Hindu. So he's murdering and killing out the, Christ uh, the Christians and, 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 and the Muslims in that country like crazy. You know what persecution they're going through? When he was in the White House, toasting with the president. But praise God for Thomas, who went there to India. 1.2, 1.3 billion people with a persecution back then. And Thomas was martyred in India back then. Praise God for his testimony in India that many Indians still speak about Thomas. Amy Carmichael, you read about her. India, she went. You ask Amy Carmichael, can I come to India? And I, I was reading her biography. She said, yeah, you get a chance to die. You want to come, you get a chance to die. That's what she replied. You get a chance to die. You know? But Thomas went to India, died there with his family. Listen to me. This thing about, this thing about uh, doubting Thomas, it's a big joke. I, I remember um, Shelly there, uh, we had a group of people, I can't remember where they were. They were sent to, to me and Shelly read it. Uh, they, they go in the Bible and they look at all the mistake and the wording of prophets and disciples and so forth. And they make fun of that. And they were sent it to Shelly. And they sent it one time and Shelly read it. I said, who are these people again? You know them? I said, I think I met them. Why are they sending these things to you? I said, what are they sending? And I said, Shelly, don't worry about it. But then um, they said it again. They talk about Moses now. They pick on Moses and that. Uh, and Shelly said, you know, kids, I'll have to answer them once and for all to get us off my chair. I said, Shelly, leave them, don't worry. But no, no, not Shelly. <laughs> not Shelly. Uh, Shelly had to send him a simple message. You have not walked in the shoes of Moses. So shut up. 
<laughs> you know, years later we came to America, and I can't remember them. And the people went up to me and said, uh, "Oh, I was the one," and your wife responded and so forth. But well, thank you that she responded because what she said causes a thing. We have never walked in the shoes of Moses. We have never walked in the shoes of Paul and Silas. We have never walked in the shoe of each other. You have never walked in my shoe, neither have I walked in your shoe. We have never walked in Pastor's shoe, Pastor has never walked in your shoe or Steve. So let us remember and understand that in this new nature of Christ, help me to love and to forgive and help me to pray and thank God for Thomas that give us so much from the Bible. My oh my. And who are me to be? On Thomas and call him doubting Thomas. How many times we doubt? You know, I don't go to preacher preacher meeting. Preacher read you have any month different preacher meeting. I get invited sometimes. A couple years ago I went to one, Steve. I was sitting there and it's like this preacher is trying to outdo the other preacher. And the other preacher said, so I said, let me sit. I was not invited to speak. I was invited to be there to share it. They said they're going to give me five minutes if I come. So I said, man, let me take this five minutes. There's a lot of preachers going to be there. But here comes this boy, this young boy. He was probably in his grand. Chunky little kid come up there. And he's preaching now. And he's preaching with David. And all he can talk about David was about Bathsheba. That's all he sees of David. And he was raw, he was wet. So I, I got up a few times, but I stood him back. I got up a few times, but I stood him back. But I waited for him to finish. And I went up. I said, Son, remember what God said about David. I blow my eye. Mm -hmm. Who are you to talk about David like that? Go and study one word in the Bible, I told him. And that's a word grace. Amen. Grace, grace, God's grace. Praise God for His grace. There's a hymn back home, I probably you know it. Shelly, I think I will need your help. Always need Shelly help, by the way. There's a little chorus that we sing back home. Shelly, help me. In the hour of prayer, I lost myself in you. Me wani taki leki you. 
been saved. And the greatest thing that you need to do as a day is say, when did Christ become my Savior? Not when you got baptized, not when, but when did I get saved? Where was I? Who was, who was I with? Can you right now say, if I die today, right now, I know that I'm going to be with Jesus. The Bible says, for the child of God to be absent from this old body of mortality is to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you honestly say, I know that I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior? Not I think so. Not I hope so. Not maybe so. But do you know Him as your Savior? If not, you can do it today. As we say to those that may have tuned in on video, and you that are here, if there's a doubt or a question, you can settle that right now. You can say, I'm going to reaffirm my faith. I'm going to drive that state down and say, this is a day I'm going to ask Jesus Christ to be my Savior. Pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on that cross and shed your blood. It is the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. Lord Jesus, I'm not trusting water baptism. I'm not trusting church membership. I'm not trusting religion. Lord Jesus, you're the one that did all the work. You took my sin upon yourself. You went to Calvary and shed your blood. On that third day, you rose again. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're my Savior. Come into my heart and save me today. I'm not trusting religion, water baptism. I'm trusting you, Jesus. You did all the work. You took my sin upon yourself. You went to Calvary and paid my sin debt in full. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart and save me today. Father, it's our prayer that anyone done that today that's listening on video or someone here might have reaffirmed their faith today. Lord, help them find a good Bible-believing church. Get in that church begin to serve Jesus like they've never served him before. Father, help us who know Christ is our Savior. Go out and be that ambassador, that witness you'd have us to be. We're so thankful that you're here today.